Maybe. So now at this time, I'll let the nursery and go on upstairs and let's take our Bibles and go to Psalm 20. And when you find your spot, we'll stand for the reading of God's word. So yes, last week decided to start preaching a series on the great texts of the Bible. Some of it is I don't feel led to start a, a, a passage of scripture, like a book of the Bible at this time. But uh, at the same time, I've already been preaching some pretty great texts, in my opinion. Philippians 2 is a great text. Colossians 3 is a great text. Preached those recently. And uh, Hebrews 12 is a great text. Well, now we're looking tonight at, or this morning, at Psalm 23. And uh, there's no arguing that this is another great text of the Bible. So let's stand together for the reading of God's word, and we'll read the whole psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's ask the Lord to bless his word. Our Father, I thank you, Lord, for this text that we're looking at this morning, this 23rd Psalm, one of the great texts of the Bible. And Lord, it's so wonderful to think that you would be our shepherd, that you'd care for us, that you'd go with us, lead us all the way. I pray, Lord, this morning that as we consider these wonderful truths from your word, I pray, Lord, that you help us, Lord, to just apply them to our lives, to get our eyes on the shepherd, to stay close to the shepherd. And I pray, Lord, that you'll fill us with the Spirit, Lord, to help us to apply these things today, to understand these things, for you fill me with the Spirit to preach your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. David says in another psalm, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. I wonder this morning, what, are, what do you boast about? <laughs> what are you boastful of? You know, people have lots of things they like to boast of. Uh, they boast of their things. They boast of their abilities. They boast of their friends or family. And, you know, they boast of their favorite hockey teams you know you can boast of them one day but not the next you know I, last year I was very boastful that I'm a fan of the Montreal Canadiens and this year I'll let me tell you, what's your favorite team Montreal Canadiens <laughs> I don't want to say it too loudly anymore it's a, not something I'm boastful of I was very hurt today uh, or maybe it was it was yesterday I had Nathan my my second born Nathan said to me that he no longer likes the Montreal Canadiens. He is now a fan of the Tampa Bay Lightning <laughs> because they beat the Montreal Canadiens last year and they're still in the playoffs now. Nate has this idea that he goes for the winner. He goes for the team that's on the top. Well, you know, the Tampa Bay Lightning might be the best team right now, but they won't be tomorrow. <laughs> you can boast of them one day, but not the next. And, uh, you know, making up my prayer list on Wednesday night to someone who was asking me about the Toronto Maple Leafs, what I thought of them. I just said, I'm thankful that's not my team. <laughs> I just boast there that I'm not a fan of the Toronto Maple Leafs. But, you know, we boast of our sports teams. We boast of our things. We boast of people. We boast of our abilities. But in reality, there's actually only one thing that's worthy of boasting of, and that's the Lord. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. When it comes to what we actually have to boast of, there's only one who is worthy of our boast, and that's God. Friends will let us down. People will fail us. 
uh, th our sports teams as the Toronto Maple Leafs fan only know disappointment and failure. But different things in this world, they, they will ultimately disappoint us. But there's only one who we can depend on in every situation, in every trial, in every circumstance to take care of us all the way. And that's the Lord our God. I wonder, do you boast in Jesus? I say all that this morning because in our text, I see a lamb that is boastful. Do you know that? I look at this text and I see this little sheep. And he's just looking around at all the other sheep. And he says, guess what? Guess who my shepherd is? <laughs> guess who takes care of me? Guess what flock I belong to? The Lord is my shepherd. He talks to all the other sheep and says, I don't know who your shepherd. I don't know who it is that's taking care of you. But guess who I belong to? The Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I wonder this morning, can you say the same thing as the psalmist in the text? Can you say the words, the Lord is my shepherd? The Lord takes care of me. I am one of his sheep. Are you one of his sheep? I can tell you that I wasn't always one of his sheep. The day I was born into this world, I wasn't, I, I, I was born in sin. I was born far from the shepherd's fold. But the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ, he came seeking for me. He sought me. In fact, he found me bound in the slave market of sin. And he purchased me to be one of his sheep. He purchased me. Acts 20 verse 28 tells us that he bought the flock of God with his own precious blood. He shed his blood so that I could be one of his sheep. One day he found me and he asked me if I wanted to be in his fold. Would I like him to be my shepherd? And all I did was say yes. Yes, Lord, I believed on him. He picked me up on his shoulders and put me over his head and he carried me back home to his fold. I've been in his fold ever since. The Lord is my shepherd. Is he your shepherd today? If you can say the Lord is your shepherd, then this psalm is just so real to you, isn't it? It means so much to be able to say that God, the Lord, Jesus Christ, is my shepherd. I really think about being a Christian. There's so many blessings, but this is right at the top, to think that he would be our shepherd. You think of all that it means when you think of the words, the Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean? How does that affect us? How does that impact our daily lives? Well, think of it. It's all in this psalm. The person who can say, the Lord is my she shepherd, he can say, number one, he cares for me. He cares for me. What is a shepherd? A shepherd is someone who cares for sheep. If you were to look up a definition of a shepherd, that's what you'd find. The, the shepherd cares for a flock. He cares for sheep. He takes care of the needs of sheep. And the psalmist says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I won't be in need of anything. I'll have my needs met. I'll be cared for. How can you say that? Because the Lord is my shepherd. Just let me remind you this morning that sheep need a shepherd. Sheep don't take care of themselves. Sheep need a shepherd to care for them. You can't leave sheep alone. And uh, driving to youth group the other night, I had, I had Ben in the car and I had Samuel in the car. And um, thinking about not being able to leave sheep alone, uh, Ben was asking Samuel about his dog, Brando, and how he is. He said, well, at the beginning, you know, he was a little wild, but, you know, he's getting better. You know, he's a, he's a German shepherd. And Ben says, he always learned something with Brother Ben. He says, you know that uh, German shepherds used to be German wild dogs, but shepherds wanted dog somebody to leave their sheep with. And so they took the wild German dogs and they trained them to be shepherds so that they could leave the shepherds with the sheep and they'd take care of the sheep for a whole day and the shepherds could have a little break, you know. <laughs> they trained German shepherds to take care of their sheep because sheep can't be left alone. They need someone to care for them, someone to look after them. And you know, we are the same way. We need a shepherd. We need someone to care for us, someone to meet our needs. And there's no shepherd better than the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the good shepherd. He is the great shepherd. 
he is the chief shepherd. Every other shepherd fails. But if the Lord is your shepherd, then you can write it down. You shall not want. You'll have everything you need because you have the shepherd, because you have the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is your shepherd today? Who, who do you have caring for you? Who do you have looking out for you? Who do you have making sure that your needs are met, making sure that you're safe, making sure that you're taken care of, making sure that you're okay? You can say the Lord is my shepherd, then you can be sure that the Lord cares for you. I'm not trying to preach this message that says, you know, I, I need to take care of me. I need someone that takes care of me and my needs first. No, I'm not saying that. But the Lord does. I'm just trying to tell you that the Lord does care for you. The devil doesn't care about you. Did you know that? The world doesn't care about you. The devil, he puts the world in front of you. He tries to allure you. He tries to attract you with the things of this life, tries to make you think that the grass is greener on the other side of the fence, tries to allure you to leave the shepherd's fold and wander away thinking that you can go after entertainment or pleasure, people or the praise of men. And he tries to get your attention and distract you from the shepherd. But it's not because he cares about you. It's not because he wants to make sure you're okay. Doesn't, it's not because he wants to make sure that your needs are met. No, the Bible tells us in John 10, verse 10, that he's a thief. The only reason he's come up to the sheepfold is to kill, to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. Well, that's not the Lord Jesus Christ. He's interested in taking care of you. John 10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. He cares for you. When you go through this psalm, and you know what you're reading of? You're reading of the care of the shepherd. You read how the shepherd cares for his sheep. He makes sure that they are fed. He leads them to the green pastures, a place where they can feed, a place where they can have the best, a place where their daily bread is provided for, and a place where they're spiritually fed, along the way. He makes sure that they have all things that pertain to life and godliness, leading them beside the still waters. You know, he knows that a sheep will get scared by running water. He knows that a sheep won't go into a loud stream to take a drink. He needs a still place, a, some still waters to have his thirst quenched. And the good shepherd leads them to the still waters. He shows them the right path, the good way to go, the paths of righteousness when they get off track he goes after them he takes care of them in the valley of the shadow of death even there he protects them from all that would hurt them he keeps them safe with his rod and his staff he gives them the best to eat all the while protecting them from the enemy now prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies it's a reference to those mountains that they call tabletops the tabletop mountains are a type of mountain that are green pastures all on the top. They're, uh, they're mountains that are great for shepherds to take their sheep to. And in those parts of the world, they take them to these high places where the sheep can have the best to eat. And shepherds make their trek there just to take care of the sheep. And yet while they're there, of course, they're out in the wild and all the enemies are there. All the wild animals, all the predators are there wanting to get at those sheep. But they don't touch the sheep when the shepherd's there. And the shepherd cares for his sheep, provides the best for them. He cares for his sheep. Don't you know that the great shepherd, he cares for you today. He cares for us. No matter what we're facing, no matter what our trial is, your shepherd cares for you. He looks out for you. He's wanting to meet your needs. And you don't have to worry about your needs. You can cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. It's so wonderful to know that he cares for us. I don't know what else to say to someone when they're going through a hard time, other than to point them to him, because he cares. I have a good friend in Southern Ontario. His name's Matt Millington. He was here like 
12, 13 years ago now to visit one summer or one Christmas time. But anyways, he, he's going through a hard time right now. His mother is very sick. And I was messaging today, or not today, but this week to just tell him I was praying for him. And I don't, I didn't know what to say to him. What do you say? And I just said, First Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. I can only say that because the Lord is my shepherd. If it weren't for the fact that the Lord is my shepherd, I'd have nothing to say. I'd have nothing good, nothing, nothing of any sustenance for anybody. But because the Lord is my shepherd, because the Lord cares for his sheep, we know that he cares for us. And we can cast our cares on him, knowing that he cares for me. A shepherd is someone that cares for sheep. If you can say the Lord is my shepherd, then you know he cares for you. But you also know something else. Number two, he leads me. If you can say the Lord is my shepherd, you can say he cares for me. But you can also say he leads me. He leadeth me. Oh, blessed thought. Is the Lord Jesus Christ your shepherd? Is he leading you? One thing you recognize about shepherds is that they're the ones that lead the sheep. The sheep don't lead the shepherd. If you see the sheep running away and the shepherd running around, running behind them, trying to catch up, you know something went wrong there. <laughs> you know that's not the way it's supposed to be. The shepherd leads the sheep. I wonder today, are you following the shepherd? Are you following the Lord Jesus Christ? A sheep, you know, a sheep without a shepherd is lost. He doesn't know where to go. He wanders down the steep cliffs. He falls into the thrones. He, he walks right into the lion's trap. He goes the wrong way. And sheep need a shepherd. And so do you and I. We need a shepherd. We need to follow the Savior. We don't know our way through this world. We don't know what way to turn. We need to follow the shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. We need him to lead us. Will you admit that you need to follow the shepherd? There was a young girl that was applying for university, and she got all distraught when she's looking at this application, and it asks the question, are you a leader? Said, oh. Got to answer it honestly. I'm not a leader. So she put the answer no, and she sent the application in, expecting the worst. Well, when she got back her letter from the college, she was very surprised to find what it read. It said, dear applicant, a study of the application forms reveal that this year, our college will have 1,452 new leaders. We are accepting you because we feel it is imperative that they have at least one follower. <laughs> Everybody wants to be the leader, <laughs> but we need to follow the shepherd. We need to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. So often we want to go our own way, but we need to fear the Lord and depart from evil. We need to follow him because he knows the way to go. You haven't walked this way year two, four. You haven't lived this life before. This isn't your second crack at it. This is your first time. But your good shepherd knows the way. He knows the way to the still waters. He knows the way to the green pastures where you can lie down and rest. He knows the way to the paths of righteousness. He knows the way through the valley of the shadow of death. He knows the way to the table that is spread for me. He knows the way that leads home forevermore. I'm so thankful he leads me. You know, so often I've gotten into trouble. And you know why I get into trouble? Because I don't follow the shepherd. That's why. I get into trouble because I take the wrong step, because I follow my reasoning, my way of thinking, my understanding. And I get my eyes off the shepherd, and I reap what I sow. I, I get myself caught in the thicket of my own making. But I realize if I just had have listened to the shepherd's voice, things would have been so different. Will you follow the shepherd?
You know, perhaps you've wandered away from the shepherd. Perhaps you've gotten to the bad place. Do you know that the good shepherd, do you know that he doesn't give up on wayward sheep? When they get off track, when they wander away, when his sheep aren't what they ought to be, when they're not where they should be, when they're tired and fainting, he doesn't get rid of them. He doesn't give up on them. It says in verse number three, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The phrase, he restoreth my soul, it, it's a phrase that in shepherding, it refers to lifting back up a sheep that is cast down. A sheep that has gone overboard, if you will. A sheep that has given up. A sheep that has come to the end and is thinking, that's, this is it. But the shepherd comes and lifts up this cast down sheep. Uh, this a book I have on the 23rd Psalm explains it. It's uh, Timothy Keller says this is an old English shepherd's term for a sheep that has turned over on its back and cannot get up again by itself. It's quite a pathetic sight, really, isn't it? Um, a cast sheep is a very pathetic sight. Lying on its back, its feet in the air. It's always frantically struggling to stand up without success. Sometimes it will bleat a little for help, but generally it lies there lashing about in frightened frustration, a cast down sheep. And they say if a, a, I, I, I was thinking that maybe I'd, maybe I'd uh, give you a, an example of what it looks like this morning, but I thought that would be an even more pathetic sight to see your pastor lying on his back, kicking and flailing and not able to get up <laughs> anyways. But, <laughs> but a cast down sheep, if they stuck that way for too long, it, it depends on how hot the day is, but on a hot day, you can be gone in hours. Another, in a not so hot day, can last a little longer. But ultimately, if the shepherd doesn't get to him in time and stand him back up, that sheep will die. That sheep has no hope. That's why the shepherd is always counting his sheep, making sure he has them all in case there's one that's cast down, one that's gone overboard. And you think of it, it's a, it's a pathetic sight. The sheep somehow got away from the shepherd, somehow got to where he wasn't supposed to be. And next thing you know, he's on his back. He's kicking and screaming. And you say, what a pathetic sheep. <laughs> yeah, but before we talk about the sheep, let's remember that the sheep is a picture of us. Now, I would have picked a different animal to identify with. I probably would have picked a lion or a bear. But anyway, the, the Bible compares us to sheep. And the sheep pictures us. We're, that's how we get sometimes. We get all tossed about. We get all turned over, turned upside down in our self, in our self-pity, in our self-obsession, in our, in, our, in our selfishness. We get so caught in ourself that we can't seem to move on and get up and get going. And yet to think the good shepherd, he cares for us. He cares for his cast down sheep. Timothy Keller says many people have the idea that when a child of God fails, when he's frustrated and helpless in a spiritual dilemma, God becomes disgusted, fed up, and even furious with him. This simply is not so. One of the great revelations of the heart given us to by Christ is that of himself as our shepherd, he has the same identical sensations of anxiety, concern, and compassion for cast men and women as the shepherd for cast sheep. He comes to us. When we get off track, he comes to us to get us back on track, to lead us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He's the good shepherd. He can't lose one of his sheep. He's not going to let you fall behind. He's not going to let you, let, let you be cast down in that sense. And he comes after his sheep to restore them, to restore their souls, to get them back on the path of righteousness. He's the good shepherd, so he goes after them. You know, it's amazing to be a part of his fold. Can you say that the Lord is my shepherd? You can say that. You know he cares for you. You know he leads you. And then number three, if you can say the Lord is my shepherd, then you can say number three, that he is with me. The great thing about shepherds is that they stay with their sheep. They don't leave their sheep nighttime through the night they're there it, it was in the same country shepherds 
abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. There they were in the middle of the night, taking care of their sheep. Jacob, in rehearsing to Laban all that he's done for him, talks about the nights that he spent in the cold and in the rain, out in the fields. Why is he out in the fields? Because he's taking care of the sheep, because that's what shepherds do. They take care of sheep and they stick with them, regardless of the weather, regardless of the storm, regardless of whether it's daytime or nighttime. A shepherd stays with the sheep. And so it is for us today. Our shepherd doesn't leave us. He sticks with us. You notice in this text that the, the talking changes. David stops talking to us about the shepherd. In verse 3, he's talking to us about the shepherd. To verse 4, he's no longer talking to us about the shepherd, but now he's just talking to the shepherd. Now he's talking to the Lord. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, it's like he's talking to us and he suddenly realizes that he's not in a good spot. <laughs> he's in a bad circumstance. He's in a spot that he'd rather not be. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. There he is going through that hard time, that difficult time. But he turns around and he can talk to the shepherd. The shepherd is right there. That's the great thing about having the Lord as your shepherd. He's always there. And when you go through that valley, when you go through a trial, when you go through a storm, you just have to say his name. You say, Lord, help me. Like Peter sinking in the water, he just said, Lord, help me. And the Lord is right there to grab you, right there to stop you from going down any further right there to pick you back up. He's right there. His presence is right there. And the sheep knows his presence. John 10, my sheep know my voice. They know his touch. They know, they don't, they know that he is with them. And so they don't need to fear as they go through the valley of the shadow of death. To have the Lord as your shepherd means that you don't go through life alone. Never alone. He's always there. He's always beside you. He's promised never to leave us or forsake us. And if the Lord is our shepherd, then what is there to fear? He's talking in this passage now about different things. He says, I will not fear the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, there the sheep is uh, to get to that tabletop mountain. They got to go through these valleys and these valleys are dark places with the mountains up on either side of them. And so the shadow is great. It's a scary place. But you got the shepherd with you. What is there to fear? Yes, we face death, but we have someone going with us that's already conquered death. The Lord Jesus Christ. He conquered the grave. There's nothing to fear with the shepherd there. We talk in this passage about the enemies. There they are up on the tabletop mountains and He's wondering about uh, safety there. There's nothing to fear because the shepherd is there. The enemies aren't going to attack the sheep when the shepherd's there. I mean, in the Bible, you read of the shepherds. David was a shepherd. He knew full well how the shepherd protects the sheep. Remember when he fought Goliath and Saul said to him, you're but a youth, you can't fight him. He said, well, listen here. I was a shepherd. And a lion came after my sheep, and I killed the lion with my bare hands. I was a shepherd. A bear came and to try to kill my sheep, and I killed the bear with my bare hands. And the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear, will deliver me out of this Philistine. And you know, God is the same for us. He protects us. Yeah, it's true. There's, there's going to be different circumstances. The devil is going to shoot his fiery darts at us. There's going to be different trials that we face, but we don't need to fear because he is with us. He is with us. You look at this text and you don't have to fear supply. Now, knowing just my head with oil, my cup runneth over. A running over cup, you often wonder, will I have enough? When the Lord's your shepherd, your cup's running over. You got more than enough. You have all that you need when you have him. Perhaps the greatest fear that people have today is the fear of tomorrow. 
what's going to happen next? What's going to happen tomorrow? I uh, hear lots of people talking about tomorrow and the dangers that this world is facing. But you have the good shepherd. He's in your tomorrows already. You don't have to fear tomorrow. You don't have to fear the next day because the good shepherd is with you. You can say with David in Psalm 23, surely goodness and mercy. That's not three different people. Surely is for sure. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God will take care of your tomorrows. He'll take care of your eternity too. He's your shepherd. He'll go with you. He takes care of us. Wonder today, can you say that the Lord is your shepherd? It's wonderful to have him caring for us, to have him leading us, to have him with us the whole way. But is he your shepherd? Lots of people, they know the psalm. I, I think of this text and one of the great texts of the Bible. If you've at all been going to church for any number of years, you know this text. You know the 23rd Psalm. It's a well-known psalm. But is he a well-known shepherd? Do you know him as your shepherd? Have you come to know the Lord as your shepherd? There's a story of a meeting place where there was a famous actor, and this was a few years ago, this illustration. I heard Pastor Rock would tell this illustration, so it's been a while since this happened. But um, <clears throat> this actor was at this meeting place, and they all were excited to see him there. And they said, can you quote for us the 23rd Psalm? And uh, the actor said, well, I'll, I, will, I will quote it under one condition. There's also a pastor that's here with us right now. And I, want, I will quote the 23rd Psalm if after I've done quoting it, he'll quote it. I say, okay. He agreed to it. The pastors agreed to it. So they decided to have them quote the 23rd Psalm. Well, the actor quotes the 23rd Psalm. And I don't know how you make it dramatic or anything like that, but as he's quoting it, they're all ooing and ahhing, and saying, oh, yes, what a great performance. What a great citation. Uh, he quoted the 23rd Psalm. And say, okay, after he's done, they all stand up and they clap and they cheer and they say, amen, amen. Well, then they say, okay, let's hear the pastor there that was there quote the 23rd Psalm. And he stands there and he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he goes down through the psalm. He wasn't getting the, you know, the ups and downs correct, I guess. He wasn't, you know, making such a great dramatic performance as the actor was. But they say after he was done quoting it, they say that they didn't stand up and cheer. But it says that every person there, they had tears in their eyes. They're all crying as he quoted the 23rd Psalm. What was the difference? Well, the actor said, yes, I have known the Psalm, but this man, he knows the shepherd. I wonder, what about you today? Yeah, we know the Psalm, it's a famous Psalm, but do you know the shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? Have you, are you one of his fold? Do you have him caring for you, leading you? walking with you day by day. Let's pray. Our Father, I thank you, Lord, this morning for this text that is so beautiful, Lord, to think of. The Lord is my shepherd. It's one of the great texts of the Bible. And yet, Lord, it'd be so sad to be here and to know that the Lord can be your shepherd, and yet not to know him as your shepherd. I pray, Lord, this morning that if there is someone who doesn't know the Lord as their Savior, who's never been part of his fold, I pray that today will be their day of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I do wonder this morning, let me ask you the question. Are you part of the Lord's sheepfold? Do you know the Lord as your Savior? Are you, is he your shepherd? You know that as you go through life that he's there with you. You can know that today. You don't have to wonder about it. You can know it based on the word of God. And if there's someone here today that isn't saved, that doesn't know the Lord as their Savior, I ask you today to just raise your hand. And I, or a man with a man, a woman with a woman, but we'll, we'll take a Bible and we'll show you from God's word how you can be saved. Anyone at all. Our Father, I thank you, Lord, for the time we've had in your word.
I pray, Lord, that you'll just bless it now to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.